The year 1991, just after the Gulf War, the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq, with which the US cooperated during the Gulf War, declared autonomy for the second time after a long time. Almost on the same days, as a result of Turkey's pressure, the PKK camps in Lebanon were closed. Although the then leader of northern Iraq, Mesut Barzani, had good relations with Turkey, he gave the green light for the PKK militants expelled from Lebanon to establish camps in his own lands. In addition, although the Syrian government recognized the PKK as a terrorist organization, it turned a blind eye to Abdullah Öcalan, expelled from Lebanon, hiding in Syria. After the reflection of this dirty alliance to the public in 1998, the Adana Protocol was signed between Turkey and Syria on the fight against the PKK under the mediation of Iran and Egypt. Thereupon, while Abdullah Öcalan was deported from Syria, PKK members in the country began to be arrested one by one. During this period, Öcalan went to Greece, Russia and Italy respectively, then Greece again and finally Kenya by a private plane from Syria, but no country gave a positive response to his request for asylum. When the date showed February 15, 1998, who came to Nairobi airport to escape to Holland, was captured by the special forces under the command of Engin Elan and brought to Turkey. Although Öcalan said that he was ready to serve the Republic of Turkey on the day he was captured, he actually had other plans. After the Syrian government banned all PKK activities, on February 16, 2002, while in prison in Imrali, he instructed the establishment of a new party in Syria through his lawyers. Following this instruction, the PKK, which increased its influence over the Syrian Kurds, founded the Democratic Union Party, namely the PYD, as the Syrian branch of the organization on October 17, 2003. The aim of the party, structured by the PKK's KCK agreement, was to establish democratic confederal Kurdistan covering the four parts, namely Turkey, Iran, Iraq and Syria. While the whole of the KCK system was connected to the control of PKK leader Abdullah Öcalan, Öcalan was determined as the leader. In addition, the party statute clearly stated that being proud of the values of leader Abdullah Öcalan and the Kurdish people, being loyal to them and struggling to save the leader from the captivity is the duty of the every party member. The PYD, directly managed by the PKK's mountain crew, took the presidency under Halef al Muhammad. Al Muhammad was also acting as the supposed commander of the YPG, the armed wing of the party. With the official establishment of the party, many politicians who left the Kurdistan Democratic Party in the Syrian parliament joined the PYD. Among these politicians was Salih Muslim, the current president of the PYD. However, although its name changed, the PYD, whose base was formed by PKK members, was not welcomed by the Assad regime. Shortly after, Bashar Assad ordered the arrest of the executive board of the party. During that process, hundreds of PYD members were arrested and many leaders, including Salih Muslim, had to flee to northern Iraq. At the end of 2004, Syria declared the PYD illegal and imposed an entry ban on many people, including Salih Muslim. After this date, PYD, which was buried in silence for a long time, started restructuring again with the outbreak of the Arab Spring in 2011. The Arab Spring, which started in Tunisia and spread to other Arab countries, spilled over into Syria in January 2011. During the series of events that turned into a civil war in a short time, the PYD seized the opportunity it was looking for. After the commencement of the rebellion, Assad swiftly sought to reconcile with the dissidents and extended an invitation to Salih Muslim, whose entry had been previously prohibited as a gesture of goodwill. He also began releasing PYD members he had arrested and imprisoned in 2004, one by one. 
Salim Maslim, who returned to Syria, stationed about 1,000 PKK members he brought with him, especially in areas where Kurds lived densely. The number of these PKK members increased rapidly towards the end of 2011 and formed YPG, the armed wing of the party. The organization's close relationship with PKK caused its influence in northern Syria to increase rapidly in 2012. The reason for this was that the militants received the necessary training, manpower, and arms supply directly from the PKK camps in Iraq. The revolutionary movement that started in Syria with the influence of the Arab Spring continued with full force. During this time, Mushal Tamo, the spokesperson for the Future Party and a recognized figure of the Kurds, who was Salim Muslim's rival, was assassinated. The Kurdish people holding Assad's regime responsible for Tamo's death began to clash with Syrian forces, which worked in Salim Muslim's favor. The PYD, which made an agreement with Assad's regime to ease the events, allowed YPG militants to settle in the Afrin, Kobani, and Hasaga regions in exchange for this agreement. The Tama assassination allowed PYD to get rid of a strong opponent and establish good relationships with the Assad regime. In the following days, the relationship was further developed and Assad recognized PYD as a political party and allowed the party to operate politically and militarily in the country. In the middle of 2012, the military forces affiliated with Assad's regime withdrew from Kurdish areas and left these areas to PYD and its armed structure YPG. As a result, the control of many Kurdish settlements, including Afrin and Kobani, passed entirely to YPG. PYD managed to become the only Kurdish party in the region by neutralizing other Kurdish parties, including the Future Party, in the areas where it gained control. After declaring its presence officially in Syria, the organization held celebrations in the areas it had seized revealing its connection to Abdullah Öcalan posters and PKK flags. During these celebrations, PKK militants Zind Rukian's interview with the Wall Street Journal revealed the organic link between PKK and YPG, stating, Sometimes I'm PKK, sometimes Pijak, and sometimes YPG. These are not really important, they are all members of the PKK. In 2014, after operating in Iraq, ISIS began to spread rapidly throughout Syria, seizing the Hasaka region first. As a result of ISIS militants' attacks on areas with a high Kurdish population, violent clashes began between ISIS and YPG. As the fighting intensified in northern Syria, the only obstacle to ISIS's goal of becoming the sole power in the region was the Afrin, Kobani and Hasaka regions controlled by PYD. Among these areas, Kobani was the first target due to being the weakest link. In May 2014, ISIS began launching small-scale attacks on Kobani. However, the organization couldn't achieve a significant outcome from these attacks and the clashes continued to escalate until August. By September, all the villages surrounding Kobani had fallen into the hands of ISIS. PYD forces unable to stop ISIS's rapid progress were forced to retreat on September 21st, bringing ISIS to within 10 kilometers of the Kobani city center. During this period, PYD co-chair Sally Muslim came to Turkey on October 4, 2014, and held talks with state officials regarding Kobani and other regional developments. In this talk, Salim Muslim demanded an end to support for Islamist opposition groups against the Kurds, Turkey's opening of its borders, and the Turkish government's support for PYD's self-governance. Turkey, on the other hand, demanded that decisions regarding the management style of Kobani be made with all Syrians, an end to cooperation with Assad, and the creation of a safe zone in northern Syria. While no concrete results were obtained from these talks, all 100 villages in Kobani's rural areas fell into the hands of ISIS by October 5. 
The fight in Kobani had turned into a city war and dozens of people were losing their lives every day in violent clashes. Despite continuing its relationship with the Assad regime, PYD which didn't receive sufficient support in the fight against ISIS, was on the verge of losing Kobani and sought help from America. In the meantime, an international coalition force led by America was created to intervene against ISIS in the international arena. The coalition's first goal was to help PYD forces trapped in Kobani. American warplanes began bombing ISIS positions on October 24, and cargo planes started providing PYD with weapons and ammunition. On the other hand, Turkey opened a corridor for Peshmerga forces to pass through its territory on October 29, allowing them to bring heavy weapons into Kobani. The clashes which continued until the end of the year resulted in the complete liberation of Kobani from ISIS by PYD militants on January 26, 2015. Following the Kobani war, the cooperation between America and PYD continued to increase and YPG became the ground force for the American army in Syria. The next target of PYD was the Tel Abyad region, which was under ISIS control. On May 6, 2015, an operation was launched to retake Tel Abyad. In addition to the ground operations, the supply lines of ISIS from Raqqa were cut off by US bombing, forcing ISIS to withdraw from Tel Abyad towards Raqqa without much resistance. YPG forces moving from the east of Kobani and the west of the Hasaka entered Tel Abyad on June 15, 2015 and took control of the area. Thus, PYD expanded its control over the regions from Jizre in the south to Ain al Arab by establishing a corridor. In 2015, after a Russian warplane was shot down by Turkey, Turkey-Russia relations reached a breaking point. Taking advantage of this situation, PYD approached Russia and began to increase its cooperation with the Russian army. With the support of America and Russia, PYD largely eliminated the presence of ISIS in northern Syria and secured its position in the region by seizing the land vacated by ISIS. However, during this period, disagreements over territorial sharing arose between PYD and the Assad regime. These disagreements eventually led to sporadic clashes between the Syrian army and the YPG. This situation became a breaking point for the Russians, who supported the Assad regime. PYD, supported by the US, was trying to establish a corridor in northern Syria that threatened Russia's geopolitical interests. Additionally, the Turkish government repeatedly expressed its intention to intervene if YPG forces crossed west of the Euphrates. Despite this warning, YPG militants supported by the US crossed the Euphrates and recaptured Mambij from ISIS. Russian President Putin and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan agreed to restore relations between their countries and reached a consensus on removing ISIS militants from Jarablus and El Bab. During this period, ISIS militants stationed on the Turkish border were launching missile attacks into Turkish territory, causing casualties almost every day. It was time for Turkey to take action in northern Syria, and its targets were Jarablus and El Bab. The Operation Euphrates Shield began on August 24, 2016, and the Turkish army entered northern Syria from the border, moving southward. The operation lasted for seven months and five days, during which Jarablus, El Bab and Dabik were recaptured from ISIS. Thus, the connection between Turkey's border and ISIS was cut off, and the PYD's progress westward was blocked. In 2016, the Joint Operations Force established against ISIS, which included PYD, was renamed the Syrian Democratic Forces. Additionally, on March 16, 2016, PYD and several political parties declared a federation with autonomous status. The federation was named Autonomous Administration of North and East Syria, but Bashar al-Assad declared that he didn't accept its autonomy. 
in 2017 as a result of many air and ground operations led by the US. Significant blows were dealt to ISIS economy and military power. During this time, PYD and the Assad regime gradually recaptured the territories held by ISIS. In September 2017, during the 7th Congress of PYD, Saleh Muslim handed over the presidency to Shahos Hassan and Heavy Mustafa. In 2018, the US announced that a 30,000 strong Syrian border security force, composed of the Syrian Democratic Forces, would be established and deployed to the Turkish Syria and Syria Iraq borders. The Turkish government strongly opposed the decision, stating that it would not allow the establishment of a terrorist army on its border and would take all necessary measures. During this period of tension, attacks with mortars and heavy weapons were launched from Afrin into Turkish territory, resulting in two Turkish soldiers being killed. This attack was the last straw and the Turkish military began preparations for an operation in Afrin. Prior to the operation, Russia had held talks with PYD leaders about handing over Afrin to the Assad regime, but this proposal was not accepted by PYD. On January 10, 2018, Russian forces began withdrawing from Afrin and the Turkish army deployed to a position near the Syrian border. Finally, on January 20, 2018, at 5 p.m., the Turkish army crossed the border and launched the Olive Branch operation. Initially, an air force consisted of 72 warplanes, destroyed YPG positions, weapons and ammunition depots, and a military airport. While PYD claimed that Afrin was a part of Syria and called for military support from the Assad regime, the offer was not accepted. By the 10th day of the operation, the Turkish army had captured the Sheikh Hadid, Shinkal and Bulbul regions, gaining control of a large area in the northern Afrin. As the conflict intensified, flights broke out in the Jindres, Mount Barsa, Rajo and Mabetli regions in February. By the end of February, all of these areas had been seized by the Turkish forces and YPG's border connection with Turkey was completely severed. The Turkish military was now only 6-7 km away from the center of Afrin. On March 17, 2018, commander units moved into the northern Afrin and by the end of the operation on March 24, 2018, 4,608 PKK, YPG, PYD and ISIS militants had been neutralized, while 54 Turkish soldiers lost their lives. After the defeat of ISIS, PYD was preoccupied with his internal affairs until 2019. During this period, the organization's militants resumed attacks on Turkey with mortars and machine guns from positions near the border. Although the Turkish government responded to these attacks proportionally, it sought a permanent solution. Government officials proposed creating a safe zone up to 30 km south of the Turkish-Syrian border settling Syrian refugees in this area and making it a buffer zone between PYD and Turkey. However, neither America, which guarantees PYD, nor the Assad regime took this proposal seriously. As a result, the Turkish armed forces decided to launch another operation in northern Syria. As preparations for the peace spring operation began, the Turkish army deployed between the Jalan Pinar and Akçakale border gates. Meanwhile, Syria army units were stationed in some settlements under PYD control and American troops withdrew from the Aleppo, Raqqa and Hasaka regions. On October 9, more than 40 warplanes and artillery bombarded PYD positions in the Tel Abyad, Resaline and Suluk regions. Then on the morning of October 10, Turkish commandos crossed the Syrian border and launched the ground operation. Despite PYD's request for America to pressure Turkey to stop the operation, the American government initially paid little attention. However, Turkey's capture of 600 settlements, 
including Resaline, Telepiat and Suluk, in just eight days spurred America to act. President Trump spoke with President Erdogan and stated that PYD militants had agreed to withdraw east of the Euphrates and that the operation should be stopped. As a result, the Peace Spring operation ended on October 17, 2019. However, despite this promise, PYD militants still hold Mambich as of today, two and a half years later. As of today, 4.5 million people live in the Syrian Autonomous Administration's self-proclaimed territory in northern Syria. Additionally, the organization has a total of 1,500,000 militants, which is equivalent to the half of the size of the Syrian army. Despite this, no country has officially recognized their federation. However, on October 20, 2021, the Catalan parliament became the first parliament to recognize the Syrian Autonomous Administration. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.